let's move on to the third week of development before going on to the third week of development we are seeing many types of drawings in embryology so it's very very important to know how or uh, what about the views of these diagrams for that i would like to show some of the important aspects of the embryo let's consider this blue colored region as the epiblast and this red colored region as the hypoblast and just imagine we are making an amniotic cavity in the upper part and we are making a yolk sac in the lower part so this is how a developing embryo will be looking like now i would like to show how this diagram will look like in order to understand this diagram we should know that this is like we are removing the amniotic cavity and we are looking from above so this is the view which we are now going to discuss so we have removed the amniotic cavity from above and we are going to look at from above so this is the view okay so the embryonic disc in the beginning of the third week of development is somewhat circular and later what happens is it will just get elongated and the cephalic end will be broadened and the caudal end will be tapered this is the third view so first the embryonic disc will be circular in section then it will be elongated and it will become a pear shaped embryonic disc now uh, from the second week onwards we always discuss the changes in the embryo under two main headings one is the changes happening for the embryoblast and the changes happening for the trophoblast so let's see what are the changes happening for the embryoblast first so what are the changes happening first the embryonic disc is circular when we look from above the epiblast is seen first so let's see what are the changes happening for the epiblast the epiblast is getting differentiated as three types the first one is surface ectoderm so the, this region is called the surface ectoderm in the midline you get a specialized region known as neuro ectoderm and towards the tail end this is the connecting stalk this is the connecting stalk which is developing as the future umbilical cord so towards the tail end you have a group of epiblast cells known as pluripotent cells so the epiblast is getting differentiated into surface ectoderm surrounding it and that is actually forming the epidermis of skin in the midline you have a specialized region known as neuro ectoderm which is giving rise to central nervous system and towards the caudal end you have a specialized type of cells called pluripotent cells the word pluripotent means it can give rise to all the three germ layers that is what is happening for the epiblast now let's see how it is getting evolved towards the caudal end or tail end we can see a particular type of thickening this is called primitive streak primitive streak is otherwise known as the primary organizer why this is called the primary organizer because this is giving rise to all the three germ layers as well as it is inducing the formation of notochord as well as the intra embryonic mesoderm so since this is forming or inducing the formation of notochord and intra embryonic mesoderm primitive streak is otherwise known as primary organizer so what are the changes going to happen in the primitive streak first and foremost thing is in the third week a specialized process happens that is called gastrulation so what do you mean by gastrulation gastrulation is a process by which this bilamina germ disc which is evolved during the second week of development is getting converted into trilamina germ disc with the intervention of a mesoderm in between the two layers that is called the intra embryonic since the mesoderm is formed within the embryoblast you call it as intra embryonic mesoderm so that this bilamina germ disc formed in the second week is getting converted into trilamina germ disc by the end of third week that process is known as gastrulation so some cells should be formed between the epiblast and hypoblast so what is the origin of these cells for that we should know what is a primitive streak so primitive streak is a thickening seen in the epiblast towards the caudal end then we can see that this is having a node like thickening towards the cephalic end this is called primitive node and what happens to the primitive node primitive node will develop a pit 
in the center this is called primitive pit or Henson's node primitive pit or Henson's node so this is the change which is happening for the primitive streak now let's see how the cells from the primitive streak are going to lie between the epiblast and hypoblast so the cells which are going from the primitive streak and lying between the epiblast and hypoblast are actually uh, divided into two groups the group of cells lying in the midline you call it as notochord and the group of the cells lying on either side of the notochord you call it as intraembryonic mesoderm so from the primitive node the group of cells which are lying under the epiblast you call it as notochord and that will reach up to this region hope you remember this region this is the precordal plate precordal plate so the primitive from the primitive streak the cells which are going and lying in the midline between the epiblast and hypoblast is known as notochord and it won't cross beyond the precordal plate and the rest of the cells which are lying on either side of the notochord between the epiblast and hypoblast you call it as intraembryonic mesoderm now let's see the formation of notochord how the form notochord is formed so this is another view as a sagittal session taken and here is the amniotic cavity and here is the yolk sac hope you can understand this view the, uh, this is as if we take a sagittal section of the em developing embryo so towards the tail here you have the attachment tail end and towards the tail end you have the primitive streak formed this is a primitive streak then you have the primitive node in which you have the primitive pit developing so through the primitive pit primitive pit means it's an opening so through the primitive pit the cells start growing towards the inner aspect towards the inner aspect the cells start growing and they grow in the cephalic direction this is the precordal plate this precordal plate is shown here so towards the precordal plate the cells start growing in the midline uh, towards the precordal plate so this process is known as notochordal process or head process so the, that's the first sign of formation of notochord notochordal process or head process derived from the epiblast and which is entering through the primitive pit into the space between the epiblast and hypoblast now later what happens to the notochordal process notochordal process or head process is a solid process filled with cells this notochordal process will develop a canal so there will be a canal formed within the notochordal process so this canal is called neuroenteric canal neuroenteric canal this is called neuroenteric neuroenteric canal now what happens to this neuroenteric canal the neuroenteric canal will come closer to the endoderm or primitive endoderm and it will get fused with the primitive endoderm the neuroendocrine canal will get fused with the primitive endoderm so that there is a communication now between the amniotic cavity above and the yolk sac below this is the communication made through the formation of neuroendocrine canal what is the purpose of this neuroendocrine canal we have already mentioned that uh, by the end of second week the placenta sta uh, has started developing but the uh, blood supply is not yet established so still the uh, developing embryo should get nutrition the so the nutrition available in the yolk sac is now diverted to the amniotic cavity and it will try to nourish the developing new rectum so for this purpose an artificial canal is made which is connecting yolk sac to the amniotic cavity that is the purpose of formation of neuroendocrine canal once the nutrition is made available there is no more need for the neuroendocrine canal so what will happen the neuroendocrine canal will start uh, elating from the primitive endoderm so this plate which is now formed is known as notochordal plate notochordal plate so first we mentioned that there is a notochordal process later a canal is formed in urinary canal that will get fused with the primitive endoderm and so the uh, so the primitive endoderm in this region will just disappear 
Now it, it forms a plate known as notochordal plate. Now what happens to the notochordal plate? Notochordal plate will start separating from the primitive endoderm and it will stay in the midline. So the primitive it will start separating from the primitive endoderm and it will stay in the midline. So the primitive endoderm is later uh, replaced by another group of cells which are derived from the primitive streak. So ultimately we can say that from this point onwards our primitive endoderm is no more called primitive endoderm. It is now called definitive endoderm. So the definitive endoderm, the cells forming the definitive endoderm are derived from the primitive streak. And now you have the notochordal canal which is getting converted as the definitive notochord. What is, what is the purpose of definitive notochord? Notochord is actually acting as a mold in the midline so that our developing vertebral column will be formed around it. And normally what happens is once the notochord is formed, uh, sorry, uh, once the vertebral column is formed, there is no need for the notochord. So it will just disappear but parts of the notochord will be seen between the vertebra as intervertebral disc. So the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc is said to be the remnant of notochord. And one more structure is seen as a remnant of notochord apart from the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc that is called the apical ligament of dense. So the notochord after, its, uh, after the formation of the vertebral column will be seen as remnants. So the two main remnants are one the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc and the apical ligament of dense. Once the notochord is formed, this will induce the formation of neural tube from the neurectoderm. So notochord is acting as the inducer for the formation of neural tube. In embryology, we can see that uh, the, all these stages are actually occurring simultaneously. With development of one structure, that will go on and induce the other structure. And it just happens like a chain. So that is what is happening. The primitive streak acts as an inducer for the formation of notochord. Notochord will act as an inducer for the formation of neural tube and it will just go on like a chain. After the formation of or simultaneous to the formation of notochord, the cells which are migrating from the primitive streak will occupy the surrounding areas of the notochord and that is what is meant by intraembryonic mesoderm. Since this is seen within the embryoblast, it is called intraembryonic mesoderm. And uh, the intraembryonic mesoderm won't be able to uh, go between two regions specifically when we talk about the intraembryonic mesoderm. It is just occupying space between the epiblast and hypoblast except at two regions. So which are the two regions where you won't get the intraembryonic mesoderm between epiblast and hypoblast. One is the precordal plate which is actually getting converted as the oropharyngeal membrane or buccopharyngeal membrane. So at the precordal plate you will get only two layers that is the epiblast and hypoblast and you won't get the intraembryonic mesoderm. Similarly, towards the caudal region, caudal to the primitive streak, you get another uh, region known as the cloacal membrane. So cloacal membrane is another region where you get only the epiblast and hypoblast and you won't get this intraembryonic mesoderm going in between the epiblast and hypoblast. So after the formation of the notochord and intraembryonic mesoderm between the epiblast and hypoblast, the cells of the uh, surface, uh, surface epiblast will be replaced by the primitive streak again. So after this formation, the primitive epiblast or primitive ectoderm is now co considered as definitive ectoderm. We have already mentioned that the primitive endoderm is getting converted into definitive endoderm after the formation of the notochord. So ultimately we can say that the primitive ectoderm is getting converted into definitive ectoderm, primitive endoderm is getting converted into definitive endoderm and with the formation of intraembryonic mesoderm, uh, the primitive streak is the only group of cell which is giving rise to all the three germ layers. So these are the changes which are happening for the embryoblast during the third week of development. One more thing I would like to mention during the third week is formation of allantoic diverticulum. So from the tail end, this is a connecting stalk 
from the tail end and from the yolk sac there is a diverticulum which is projecting into the connecting stalk this is called allantois or allantoic diverticulum what is the purpose of allantoic diverticulum allantoic diverticulum will be provided with blood vessels and this is actually projecting into the connecting stalk and this will try to vascularize the connecting stalk so ultimately the umbilical arteries of the connecting stalk are derived from the allantois once the umbilical arteries are formed this is the allantois is getting converted as uracus umbilic allantois is getting converted as uracus within the intra uh, uterine life and once uh, the baby is born this will gradually get converted into median umbilical ligament you might have studied about the median umbilical ligament so the uracus is seen within the intra uterine life and this is getting converted into median umbilical ligament which is actually getting connected from the urinary bladder to the umbilicus so allantois first it is actually for the vascularization of the connecting stalk and the formation of umbilical arteries later it is becoming uracus and which in turn is getting converted into median umbilical ligament in case of adults usually what happens to the primitive streak by the end of a, a fourth week the primitive streak usually disappear but at times it may persist in the newborn and that is that condition is called sacro coccygeal teratoma sacro coccygeal teratoma as the word implies it is seen towards the sacrum and coccyx region because primitive streak is actually formed at the tail end so if the, it is persisting in the newborn that is seen in the form of sacro coccygeal teratoma a very big uh, tumor but the tumor is benign as the word implies the teratoma means you will get the derivatives of all the three germ layers so and it is benign and it is usually seen in female uh, newborns and uh, it has got a very good prognosis now let's see what are the changes happening for the trophoblast till now we mentioned about the changes happening for the embryoblast now what let's see what are the changes happening for the trophoblast by the end of second week we have uh, discussed about the formation of primary villi primary villus means let's see how a section will look like this is the extra embryonic mesoderm towards the outer aspect of the extra embryonic mesoderm we have the cytotrophoblast and outer to it we have the syncytial trophoblast outer to it we have the syncytial trophoblast so this is how the layers will look like so we have already discussed the formation of primary villus how the primary villus has formed the primary villus is formed by the proliferation of the cytotrophoblastic cells into the syncytial trophoblast so if you take a section at this level we can see that towards the central core you have the cytotrophoblast and surrounding it we have the syncytial trophoblast this is how a primary villus will look like and a primary villus is formed by the end of second week of development now what is happening in the third week of development for the trophoblast the intra uh, the, the extra embryonic mesoderm the mesoderm which is lying outer to the embryoblast this is called the extra embryonic mesoderm it will start invaginating into the core of the cytotrophoblast we can see that it will start invading the cytotrophoblast core of cytotrophoblast now we can say that the innermost thing is the extra embryonic mesoderm which is surrounded by cytotrophoblast which is again surrounded by syncytial trophoblast so this is called the secondary villus so by the uh, beginning of third week we have the formation of secondary villus chorionic villus now towards the end of third week we have the blood vessels developing from the allantois that is the umbilical blood vessels and these blood vessels will be invading the developing villi towards the villi the blood vessels will start invading so that towards the center you have the fetal capillaries so 
if you take a cross section we have the fetal capillaries then you have the extra embryonic mesoderm outer to it you have the cytotrophoblast and again outer to it we have the syncytiotrophoblast this is called tertiary villus so by the end of third week we have the formation of tertiary villus so this is tertiary villus towards the core we have the fetal capillaries so these are the fetal capillaries surrounded by extra embryonic mesoderm then you have the cytotrophoblast which is covered by syncytiotrophoblast so the formation of secondary villus and tertiary villus happens during the third week of development these are the changes happening for the trophoblast so to summarize we can see the changes happening for the embryoblast and trophoblast the main process which is happening during the third week is known as gastrulation so gastrulation is nothing but the formation of intra embryonic mesoderm between the epiblast and hypoblast we have discussed about the primitive streak which is otherwise known as the primary organizer and that is actually giving rise to all the three germ layers the primitive ectoderm is getting converted into definitive ectoderm primitive endoderm is getting converted into definitive endoderm and we have the intervening intra embryonic mesoderm so all the three germ layers are derived ultimately from the primitive streak normally the primitive streak disappears by the end of fourth week if it persists it is seen as the sacrococcygeal teratoma we have discussed about the allantois which is actually giving rise to the umbilical blood vessels um then we have uh, discussed about the formation of notochord which is acting as a mold for the formation of vertebra once the vertebral column is formed the uh, notochord is actually uh, degenerating and but still some part of the notochord will be persisting between the vertebra in the form of nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc and the apical ligament of dens that is what is happening to the developing notochord so these are the changes and uh, special mention for the formation of precordial plate and cloacal membrane precordial plate is getting modified as the buccopharyngeal membrane or oropharyngeal membrane towards the cranial end and the cloacal membrane is getting modified as the anal membrane and urogenital membrane all these details we will be seeing in the coming sessions when we discuss about the systemic embryology in detail